boys and girls. Today we're going to do lesson 14-3, and this starts on page 541 in your book. Make sure you have a pencil, and remember you're not tearing out the pages. All right, let's start at the top of page 541. Madison wants to exercise 30 minutes every day. Before school, she only has enough time to exercise for 10 minutes or less. One day, she exercised for 8 minutes before school and 22 minutes after school. This is one way she can exercise for 30 minutes. Find two other ways she can exercise before school and after school to reach her goal of exercising for 30 minutes each day. Well, let's see. Let's make a chart. A T chart, because it looks like the letter T. Here we'll put before for before school. Here we'll put after for after school. And remember that each row has to equal 30. But before school has to be 10 minutes or less. Can't go over 10 minutes. So let's see. We already have 8 before school and 22 minutes after school. That's what it told us in the story here. Let's say she did have time to exercise 10 minutes before school. So to make 30, 10 plus, that would be 20. Maybe she only had 9 minutes exercise before school. What do I have to add to 9 to equal 30? The answer would be 21. Suppose she had 7 minutes before school. What do I have to add to 7 to make 30? The answer would be 23. And of course our chart could go on and on and on as long as we didn't go more than 10 minutes before school. So down at the bottom, it says, do you think there are more ways to solve the problem? Explain. We're going to cross out explain. And we're just going to say, see the chart. Because our chart could go on and on. And our chart already has more than two ways. It has four ways. All right, let's turn the page. On page 542, this is about adding and subtracting time intervals. And they're showing you different ways to do it. Let's read the problem. Joaquin made a list of the time he should spend on different activities. Joaquin has practiced playing the piano 35 minutes so far. How much longer does he need to practice? Well, let's see. Practice piano is right here, and he needs 45 minutes. She's explaining here that a time interval is an amount of time. One way they did it was with a bar diagram. It needs to be 45 minutes total. Part of that 35 minutes he's already done. How much longer does he need to practice? So she said 35 plus question mark, the answer we don't know, equals 45. And she figured out it was 10. Another way to do it would be to say 45 minus 35 equals 10. Here they used a number line. I do not like the number lines they use in this book because they only have the tens on the number line. And sometimes we're going to need minutes that are in ones or fives. But one way she did it on this number line was she, she hopped to 45 because she knows that's what he needs. Then she hopped back 35, which was 10, 20, 30, and the extra 5, to see that she landed on 10, he has 10 more minutes to practice. In my opinion, the number line is the least efficient way to do it because none of their number lines are marked off in ones. All right, let's go down to the bottom of the page. How much longer will it take Joaquin to finish all of his after-school activities? Show one way to represent and solve. Well, let's see. 45 minutes is piano, but we're talking about all of his after-school activities. That would be 45 for the piano, plus 50 for playing with Ron, plus 60 for homework. And we could stack and solve those, and it would be a lot easier. 5. 15, so that's 155 minutes. 
So one hour is 60 minutes. Two hours is 120 minutes. 60 plus 60, two hours. So if we take away the 120 minutes for two hours, that would leave us with 35 minutes. So two hours, 35 minutes to finish all of his after school activities. All right, let's move on to page 543. Remember, you can always pause this video anytime you need to catch up or watch something again. So for number one and two, they want us to use the bar diagram or the number line. Here they want us to use a number line. It's gonna be a little more difficult, but we'll do it this one time. After this, we're not using number line. Number one, we're using a bar graph. Rody plans to ride his bicycle for 55 minutes. So far, he has ridden for 29 minutes. How many more minutes does he have to ride? Here's our bar diagram. 55 minutes is the total he um, plans to ride. He's done 29. What is this number going to be? This question mark. Well, there are two ways to solve it. One is 55 minus 29. And we'd have to stack and solve that. So I'm going to use um, my margin here. 55 minus 29. Oh, Tyler, borrow a 10. 15 take away 9 is 6. 4 take away 2 is 2. The answer is 26 minutes. I'm going to erase that question mark I wrote there and put in 26. Of course, the other equation I could use is 29 plus question mark equals 55. But the best way to solve it would be with subtraction. Number two, Ms. Darren spends the reading period working with two different reading groups. She meets with the first group for 23 minutes and meets with the second group for 17 minutes. How long is the reading period? Well, they hop the 23 minutes and they since the number line is mark, not marked off in ones, they kind of had to guess where three would be. We know it's less than half. We have to jump 17 minutes. Now, in the book, they jump 17 minutes all at one time and expect you to know how, where to land. I think that's ridiculous. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 17 apart into a 10 and a 7. That makes 17. So first I'm going to hop the 10. So if this is 23... Hopping 10 would make 33. And then I have to hop 7 more. And if this were marked off, I would know that 33 plus 7 is going to land me on 40. So the answer is 40 minutes. Now, if you didn't have a number line, which is really not a good way to solve this problem, the best way to solve the problem is to add 23 plus 17. And we could stack and solve that and come up with 40 pretty quickly without using the number line, which is a little cumbersome. Let's go down to number three. Claire and Owen. Oh, look, Owen, you're famous in math today. Claire and Owen played video games. The first game lasted 24 minutes. After the first game, Claire and Owen had lunch for 30 minutes. The second game lasted 36 minutes. How many minutes did they play the game? Do not let the extra information trick you here. How much time they had lunch is not important. We're only looking at how many time minutes they played the game, 24 and 36. So here's 24 minutes, here's 36 minutes. We need the total. We can add, we can stack and solve and come up with that answer. I'm going to use my margin right here. 4 plus 6 is 10. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. So the answer is 60 minutes. And we know that 60 minutes is the same as 1 hour. So you can write 60 minutes here. But since we know that's an hour, we can put 1 hour. All right, let's go down to number 2. Mr. Hart's class is putting on a play. The play is divided into two acts. Each act lasts 27 minutes. How many minutes long is the play? Oh, I skipped number four. That's okay, we'll go back to it. Let's make a bar diagram. 
just like they did above. So we have each act is 27 minutes. So I'm going to divide my bar in half. This is 27, this is 27, and we don't know the total. So to find the total, we're going to stack and solve. 27 plus 27, 7 plus 7 is 14, 1 plus 2 plus 2 is 5. The answer is 54 minutes. We can't write hours because it's not even one hour. It's less than one hour, so we have to write minutes. Let's go back to number four that I skipped. Yan jogged for 60 minutes on Friday. Dino jogged 12 fewer minutes than Yan. Both friends swam for 40 minutes each day. How many minutes did Dino jog on Friday? We are not going to use the cumbersome number line. And we are also not going to be tricked by the extra information about how long they swam. Because we only want to know about jogging. So we know that Yan jogged for 60 minutes. Dino jogged 12 fewer. So how many minutes did Dino jog? We can do this with subtraction. We're going to start with our 60 minutes. Take away the 12 minutes fewer. Just kind of running into my number line here. Oh, I need some help with this subtraction. It's too bad Tyler's not here. I'm going to cross out my 6 and make it a 5. Change my 0 to a 10 because I can't do 0 take away 2. 10 take away 2 is 8. 5 take away 1 is 4. The answer is 48 minutes. Can't use any hours because you have to have 60 minutes or more to make an hour. Let's go down to number six. They didn't give us much room for number six. A chef wants to bake a dish for 30 minutes. So far, the dish has been baking for 12 minutes. How many more minutes does the dish need to bake? Here is my bar diagram. Much better way to solve this problem. So the total needs to be 30. So far, we've only done 12 minutes. This is the number I need to know. And remember, this is a lot like the bar diagram I had here, where subtraction was the easiest way to solve the problem. So over here in my margin, I'm going to do 30, take away 12. I have to borrow again. 10 take away 2 is 8. 2 take away 1 is 1. So the answer is 18 minutes. I'm going to go through and circle my final answers here. Help this poor teacher out. Those are my four final answers. And we're going to turn the page. We're going to go to page 544, starting right at the top. Miss Merrill spends 55 minutes washing all the windows in her two-story house. How much time could she have spent on each floor? Complete the chart to show three different ways. Well, if you remember back to the very first page where we made a chart and every row had to equal 30, we're doing something similar to that, except that every row has to equal 55. So if she spent 25 minutes on the first floor, how many minutes could she spend on the second floor? 55. Take away the 25 minutes she spent on the first floor would leave us 30 minutes. Hmm. Or another way we could do it and still make 55 is to spend 30 minutes on the first floor and then 25 minutes on the second floor. But suppose it took her a lot longer to finish the second floor because you have to climb a ladder to do the second floor. So let's say she spent only 15 minutes on the first floor how long would she spend on the second floor? We can subtract 55 minus 15, and the answer would be 40 minutes. That makes sense. Of course, there are a lot of other ways we could do this. This is just three ways she could divide up for 55 minutes. Let's go to number eight. Here we're going to take a break from time and look at fractions. Don't want you to forget everything you learned about fractions. Harry measures a stick that is four halves inches. Rhea's stick is six halves inches. Whose stick is longer? Explain. Well, 
You know I don't like that word. But you know that fractions are pretty much just division problems. You can take the numerator divided by the denominator, and we can know that Harry's stick is 2 inches. We can do the same thing with, let me write that fraction there, Rhea stick, which is, I'm sorry, sticker, and we can change it to a division problem. 6 divided by 2 is 3 inches for Rhea's sticker. So we know that Rhea's sticker is longer. Okay, let's move to number nine. Number nine is one of our higher order thinking problems, so it's going to have more steps. It's a shame they didn't give us more space. Mr. Collins is learning to drive a truck. He drives 22 minutes on Monday and 14 minutes on Tuesday. Finally, he drives six more minutes on Wednesday than he did on Tuesday. How many total minutes does he practice driving a truck? So we know Monday and Tuesday, those are pretty easy. It's 22 M for Monday, 14 T for Tuesday. But for Wednesday, it's six more than Tuesday. It's not just six minutes. It's six more minutes than Tuesday. So for Wednesday, it's going to be 14 plus 6. And we know that 14 plus 6 is... 20. So 20 is our Wednesday time. Then we can stack and solve and add them all up to get the total minutes. That would be 22 plus 14 plus 20. 2 plus 4 is 6. 2 plus 1 is 3 plus 2 is 5. So the answer is 56 minutes. And I'm going to abbreviate circle my final answer. Remember that you can pause this video anytime you need to stop and look at it again or catch up. Let's go to number 10. I want to point out that both number 10 and 11 say use the number line and we are not going to use the number lines. The number lines are not marked off into ones and there's not room to mark them off into ones so the number lines are pretty useless. Sonia hikes up a mountain. It takes her 25 minutes to hike to a cliff that is part way up the mountain. Here's her hike to the cliff, 25 minutes. After that, she hikes for 17 more minutes to the summit. We can fill in the blank here in our chart with 17. And then, of course, we're not going to use the number line, but we are going to complete the table and show how many total minutes Sonia spent hiking. What we have to do is add 25 plus 17 to get our total. I can stack and solve right here. 5 plus 7 is 12. Carry the 1. 1 plus 2 plus 1 is 4. So the answer is going to be 42. I don't have to write minutes because they put minutes at the top of the column. That is my final answer. Let's look at number 11. Meg walks a dog named Shep for 12 minutes. Let's fill in the blanks here. Then she walks Sparky. We don't know how much time she walks Sparky. Finally, she walks Brownie for 18 minutes. Meg spends 52 minutes walking all three dogs. So 52 is my total. We're not going to use the number line, but we are going to complete the table to show how many minutes Meg spent walking each dog. So if I add these three numbers, I would get 52 but I don't know what this number is. So I could say 52 minus the other two numbers, 12 and 18, is going to get me my answer. So if I add 12 plus 18, here in my empty space I had, 12 plus 18, that gets me 30. So I know those two together make 30. Now I have 52 take away 30. And the answer here is going to be 22 minutes. 
I don't have to write the word minutes because they use minutes at the top of the column. And my it said complete the table. So here I've completed the table. This answer right here was my unknown that I solved for. All right. Remember, you can stop this video at any time. You need to catch up or go back and watch it again. Here's our homework for tonight. Page 175, lesson 14.3. Here are the problems we're going to do. We're going to do one, two, three, and four. And you do not have to use the number line. You can if you want to. You certainly don't have to. It says draw a bar diagram or a number line. I'm a big fan of those bar diagrams. But you can use the number line if you want. All right, let's turn the page over. On the back, we're going to do number seven. Remember, that's probably going to be a multi-step problem. And then we're going to go down to the bottom and use nine and ten. And remember, once again, you do not have to use the number line if you don't want to. I'm not a big fan of number lines for finding this, the answer to these particular problems. It'd be better if they gave me a number line that was marked off in ones. But it's much too difficult with a number line marked off in tens and not really enough space to put in the ones. All right, this shouldn't take you too long. I hope you've understood. If not, you're welcome to go back and watch the video again. I'm going to be posting a couple of other videos about elapsed time that I hope will help too. So have a good time with math today. Bye.